Well, hello everyone. It's April. I have not done an unhaul for a while. I went to my shelves. I grabbed a bunch of books that I don't need on my shelves anymore. Let's dive in. being closer to 15,000 subscribers on this channel. And I am doing a $150 Amazon gift card giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video and like this video. Stick around until the end of this video and I'm going to get into more detail about the giveaway itself and how you can win. I have 11 books here that I am getting rid of. I'm going to be donating them. I just don't need them on my shelves anymore. Um, the first is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Now listen, everyone knows that Jacqueline Woodson is a beautiful writer and she really is. I love her lyrical writing style. However, this did not seem as lyrical to me as some of her other books like Brown Girl Dreaming. Um, I've read quite a few of her books and this just didn't hit me the same way. This follows a young girl who is graduating and she is having a, a party for her graduation. And this also goes back in time to 16 years before when her mother was on the brink of also going off to college, but got pregnant with this daughter who was now graduating. Now this book is about that mother-daughter relationship. It's also about the expectations the parents can put on their children. It's about this mother who found out quite young that she was pregnant and dealing with the inner turmoil of that. It was really good. I just don't feel like I need it on my shelves anymore. Next up is Scythe. Uh, this is a sci-fi utopian world in which people don't die anymore. And so you need people named scythes to go around and kill people at random. I loved the first book. The second book I just didn't like. So I've decided to unhaul the series. I'm ending the series. I'm not going on with it. Uh, it just wasn't for me in the end. Next is a Jane Austen. Oh my goodness. This is Mansfield Park. I, guys, I I didn't really love this. This was not my favorite Jane Austen by any stretch of the imagination. Sadly, this was the last Jane Austen that I needed to read before I read all of her. Uh, but Mansfield Park follows a woman named Fanny Price and she has grown up with her cousins. Unfortunately, there are people who come from London, I believe, who have all of these like glitz and glamour that they bring to their lives. And Fanny's just not having it, but the cousins like fall for this hook, line and sinker. And Fanny is again and again trying to bring her cousins back down to earth and make them question these people's intentions and their motives. And I just didn't really care about Fanny and I definitely didn't care about any of the cousins and I, I just didn't like it, guys. So I'm I'm gonna let go of this one. Next is a book that, I, that was sent, actually the next two are books that were sent to me by publishers that I just, I had to DNF because I just was not enjoying myself. Um, the first is The Royal Governess by Wendy Holden. This is about the governess to Queen Elizabeth as a child. So Queen Elizabeth grew up like in the midst of the Second World War. And this book follows her governess who comes to stay kind of randomly at the house. Like she grew up impoverished and ends up working for the royal family, which is a, a pretty big step up in life and she takes care of the kids and brings some solace to the kids and some normalcy to the kids. I really didn't like how she portrayed Queen Elizabeth. I didn't like how she was treated and portrayed as completely spoiled and um, the main character didn't seem to understand certain like security precautions. And I, I just found it very frustrating. So. There's only so much eye rolling you can do before you know you have to put it down. 
Um, similarly, I felt the same way about Lovely War, which is really sad because I was so looking forward to this. This is a World War One, I, I think, and World War Two historical fiction novel. And it's narrated by Aphrodite, the goddess. And she has to tell the story of two love stories to convince the other gods uh, that love exists and that love is important. And so she decides on these stories. And I really found the characters extremely annoying. It's YA and I often feel this way with YA where I just don't care and I get frustrated and I had to put it down. Ah, I'm sad to say. Again, romance, no heart. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a bad combination. Next up is a, <laughs> Next up is a, is a horror book that I despised. Um, that was a misery to get through. And this is Misery by Stephen King. I feel like if Noelle ever watched this, Noelle Gallagher, she would just cry because this is her favorite Stephen King. And I feel so badly. I picked this up because of Noelle. Uh, but I just didn't like it, guys. Um, so Misery by Stephen King is about Annie, who is a nasty piece of work. And we also follow a man named Paul, who is a novelist, and he is in a brutal car accident that's left him very much injured. And Annie is luckily a nurse who, you know, works with him and tries to, you know, bring him back to health. Unfortunately, she's also a psychopath. She's his biggest fan, but she doesn't like how he ended a certain series that she loves and so she makes him rewrite and like write the next chapter of the series that should have not continued and she's she's meant to be terrifying i found her just more amusing at times i wasn't scared at all and i was it really was a slog to get through slog is that the right word it was hard to get through I don't want this on my shelves anymore. What sadly, I picked this up at Value Village a while ago and as someone wrote in here, this book inspired me to write again, enjoy Love Scott. And so I feel very, very guilty for not liking it. But now I'm going to pass it back, hope probably to Value Village, and hopefully someone will pick it up and love it. Thanks, Scott. Anyway, um, last but not least is a book that I really did enjoy, but it went from a high at the beginning and then kind of dropped out for me. This is Luster by Raven Leilani. Uh, this is about a woman living in Brooklyn. She's a black woman really struggling to keep her job and she lives in a, in a place that's just almost uninhabitable if I'm being honest. Now she is on the dating scene. She meets a man who is married and says I'm in an open relationship and they start to have a relationship and she eventually goes and lives with him and his wife and their adopted black daughter. This couple has, are white and have adopted a black daughter and it's about her relationship with that with that young girl and their connection it was very good especially at the beginning like guys i had tears in my eyes at the beginning when i was reading it i i felt like i was constantly on the brink of tears and then as it went along i just cared less and it felt strange it, it was bizarre that that was my reading experience i haven't had that happen to me a lot in books um, I do recommend it for sure, but I just, it was a three star read from me and my rule is if it's three stars or below, I, I get rid of it from my shelves. The last four books, I'm not even going to go into detail about. Um, sadly, um, a publisher sent like four books over to me, but I, like I didn't ask for any of these and none of them are books that I'm interested in. So I feel badly. Some of them even are in the midst of a series so i'm not going to read them so there's butcher pen road by chris lackey i'm gonna pass that along 
uh, Joe Kenda's Killer Triggers. I'm going to pass along The Archivist by Rex Pickett. This is the author of Sideways, like the, the screen screenplay, the movie. Um, and then also The Storytellers, which is straight talk from the world's most acclaimed suspense and thriller authors. But it's old, like it seems old. But, and yet it's coming out in July of 2021. It's, it's really weird. Anyway, I just, I feel badly, but I think I prefer with publishers to like be able to pick myself. So those are all the books that I am releasing from my shelves to make more room for more wonderful books on my shelves. Let me know in the comments below if you've ditched any books, if you have decluttered any books from your bookshelf that's made you feel really good. Sometimes it feels good. It feels cathartic. I'd love to know. And I will chat with you very soon. Bye guys. All right, with 15,000 subscribers just around the corner, this is your chance to win a $150 Amazon gift card. I, it's in Canadian because I am Canadian. And I hope that one of you will be able to buy all sorts of lovely books from your wish list with it. Now, in order to win, you need to first be subscribed to this channel, like this video, and also leave a comment in the comments below. After we hit 15,000 subscribers, I am going to uh, pick a random video, randomize the comments, and pick a winner. So the more videos you watch, the more comments you leave, the more chances that you are going to have to win. Good luck to all of my bookish friends out there.